Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show 183. I've gotten a couple of inquiries about the antenna that I use on my Grundig 700 shortwave radio. And what I'm using for an external antenna is an antenna that I bought probably 25 years ago, so it's not a new design, anything like that. And it's, you know, pretty old, sitting up there in the sky. And may have deteriorated some, and plus right now it's kind of shaded by some trees that are overgrown. But it still does an excellent job. And what it is, it is specifically, it's an antenna called a G5RV. Very popular antenna. And this particular one that I have, which was originally designed for transmitting uh, on HF if you have a uh, amateur radio license. And um, it, of course, can be used for receiving, but the particular model I have has a little more complication to it, and therefore it's more expensive, um, so that you can, like I said before, you can transmit on it and not worry about damaging your transmitter. Right here we have um, a kind of an overall view of what a general one would look like, but you, c you can make them even simpler than this if you're just going to receive. So what it is, it's two pieces of wire with a total length of 102 feet, and that gives you um, an antenna that will work uh, down to 80 meters, which is about 3.5 megahertz, all the way up to 10 meters, which is uh, 28 megahertz. And this is what I'm using on my Grundig radio right now. Now, mine actually has another component right here, which is, um, they talked about C construction is a balum, which is a matching device to match. This is uh, a ladder line is what it's called. It's 300 ohms, what you used to use on old TVs um, to bring it into your TV set. It's kind of a flat cable. And this, uh, this can be like any kind of wire, really. And then this is just a device that separates the two wire, two pieces of wire, but it ties into here. And then this is your coax cable. So this is uh, basically what I've got. I, we can go over to another website. And here, here I did a search on dipole. Now, a dipole has lots of configuration. If you remember those old rabbit ears you used with your TV sets, that's a that's a dipole antenna. It has those two pieces. In the case of those rabbit ears, they were telescopic uh, pieces, um, and uh, a matching um, ladder line that connected to your TV. And you can see there's all kinds of configurations. Some of them complicated. Here's one that's even round. So these are these are all the things that are claimed to be dipole antennas. Now, as I said, you can make a simple one that is kind of if we look at this one here for instance. You see if I see what happens when I bring this up. Okay. So this is just um, the two wires. This is, uh, he's showing here to use a ballum. You don't have to use a ballum, but it helps match, match the impedance of these two wires to your 50 to 75 ohm coax. Again, since you're only receiving, you're not too concerned about matching those impedances. So you don't have to use a ballum. This could be just a, like a piece of phenolic uh, or a piece of plastic just for attachment points so you can attach these two legs and then bring up your coax and bolt it down so it's secure 
and that's all you really need. And then this is uh, just showing two insulators so that you can uh, connect the end of these legs to a tree or whatever and have it insulated from the actual antenna because you don't want the actual antenna to touch anything. And like I say, this can be basically any kind of wire just as long as it's strong enough to hold up in any wind or anything like that. So the other thing I can show you is here is the website ham.net and they have a lot of good articles and here's an article on basically building your first HF shortwave dipole and it gives you all the details about building one and you know the, I think down, somewhere down here it talks about you know using rope to uh, secure the ends of it shape of the antennas kind of coax weatherproofing it so this is a great article again this is um, under um, the website e.ham, which if you go there and search their articles um, you'll f for HF Dipole, you'll find this article. Okay, go to one other place here. Now here's where you can actually buy one. You don't want to try to construct one. Now this one is a little more sophisticated in that it has, of course, the two legs copper wire with uh, uh, the um, insulators and it includes a ballum to help match your uh, coax line and then it has this 300 ohm feed they call it feed line so that's uh, $62 I think when I bought mine back 25 years ago, I think they're like $20, $19 or something. But, but this is a, this is a, like I say, it's for shortwave listening from 10 meters to 80 meters, and the overall length of this, when you hook it up, you stretch it out, is 102 feet. That's so that you can get down to. 80 meters or 3.5 megahertz because the uh, the length of the antenna is inversely proportional to um, the frequency in meters. I hope I said that right. Now we since I mentioned that let me bring this up. I am not an expert. I don't claim to be an expert. So if I make a mistake here please put a comment correct of me and I will correct the, um, the video and add an annotation correcting whatever I said wrong. So, But I thought I had, and maybe this one has it. Let's see. thought I had. Yeah, here is, uh, here is the, let's see if it shows it at the top. Now, nope. here is basically a formula for calculating the length of the um, the antenna uh, legs, and it's 468 divided by the frequency that you want in megahertz. And um, if you want, you know, to work multiple bands, you would um, calculate for the highest band in meters and this is this uh, divider is in megahertz so for instance if you wanted to work down to all the way down to well, let's not go too far let's say down to three and a half megahertz uh, you would divide 468 by three and a half megahertz and you'd get about a hundred feet and typically um, these that are prefabricated I don't know if you can see it in fine print. This is 102 feet long. That's the total length uh, with two legs that uh, basically are 50, 51 feet each. So it's a pretty long antenna, but you don't have to have it that long. I mean, this is just to get it to work all the way down to uh, 
3.5 megahertz. It will, your, it will, the radio, if it's shorter, say it's half the length of this, or even a fourth, it'll still work down on those, lo lo those lower frequencies, but it won't work as well. So if you want to get down to like 3.5 megahertz and above, then you'd want the longest, which is 102 feet. So hope that made sense. I sure garbled that up. Oh, jeez. Anyway, okay. So there again, here it shows 102 feet, which is mine is 102 feet. I've got mine uh, mounted on the peak of my second story, and then it slopes down to two trees, one in my front yard, one in my back far yard. That's how I'm able to get 102 feet. Um, and I, th I think that means it's about, the peak of it is about 20 feet in the air. And the beauty of the uh, Grundig uh, 700 is that it has a B and C connector um, for an external antenna, which you can put on this coax, which I'm, which mine actually has what's called a PL259 connector, and then I have an adapter to B and C. So I got an adapter in there. Okay. Now, uh, see if I got any other pages I wanted to show you. I showed you that page, showed you that page. We talked about that page. Of course, there's my Amazon radio store, and I uh, show you some uh, some of these antennas uh, that I'm talking about. And and again, they come in various lengths, and the pro the longer it is, the more expensive they are. And of course, the longer they are, the better they will get the lower frequencies. Okay, now the other thing I've got is uh, I pulled out my the complete shortwave listeners handbook which I did a review on one of my shows it's by Andrew Yotter and under the section about antennas he has a section about popular fallacies about shortwave antennas and he's got six items and I think these are a Way some good value. Good value. <sighs> I can't even talk. Anyway, first one is indoor antennas are ineffective. That's a fallacy. As long and what he says, as long as the building is not metal or metal structured, they should work fine. Well the one thing he left out, which is my problem, is that interference within the room N near the radio and that's what I suffer from and that's why I use an external antenna is in the room that I have my Grundig set up I have let's just say many computers running and they're all generating and other devices and they're all, all generating noise so if I try to listen to shortwave using the built-in antenna all I get is my computers be blah 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 be and all kinds of noise. So I have to use an external antenna, and it just so happens I have that external antenna, so that's what I'm using. So indoor antennas will work pretty good, but if you've got a lot of metal or anything that can block the signals from coming in your room, or like me, you got noise, they're going to be ineffective. Next fallacy, loops in antennas will cause large signal loss. In other words, if you've got a bunch of coiled up wire because you have extra wire from your antenna, uh, it would, the fallacy is it will cause large signal losses. His response is, loops might cause an antenna to snap, but they won't make a noticeable difference in the signal. So you can loop that extra wire and it shouldn't be a problem. Again, if you want to correct me, please leave a comment. I'm just reading out of the book here. Okay, next three. The antenna must be high as possible. Now, I always thought that too. But what he says is this is true for transmitting, 
but not for receiving, especially in the low shortwave frequencies and in the AM broadcast band. So I, I still think that if you get, your, get the end, that the thing is, and that, that's what I've always thought, is you need to get the antenna away from the surrounding structures, such as trees and stuff like that. Try to, you know, try to get it up in the air and clear. Now, 10 feet, 15 feet, that's probably plenty. Okay. Next one. Number four. Insulation or tarnish will prevent the radio signal from entering the antenna. And he says, corrosion might ruin connections, but neither it nor tarnish will ruin an antenna as far as reception. So, the fifth one, only specific frequency antennas work well. His response is, this, there is a case for this, but random wire and long wire antennas, which I kind of include my dipole in that, um, are very effective nonetheless. So, as I was saying before, even if you can only string up a dipole that's for 40 meters and you want to receive 80 meters, it'll still work pretty good because you're not transmitting. Keep that in mind. Uh, okay, the last one. TV antennas are fine for shortwave reception. Now, I had, I've seen a comment about TV, using TV antennas, and his response is, they are okay in a pinch, but you will notice a big difference between a TV antenna and any kind of shortwave antenna. So basically, don't, don't bother using a TV antenna. You know, it will help because it's an external antenna, but don't expect it to help that much. Now, granted, as you saw from one of those pictures, TV antennas, rabbit ears, for instance, uh, dipole are dipoles. But they're very short, which means they're being short, they're only good for high frequencies. Now, when I say high frequency, I really mean ultra high frequency, like 500 megahertz, where the TV signals used to be before they went digital. So using a TV antenna, an antenna that was designed to work with a TV is going to help a little bit, but don't expect much. You're probably better off having a just a long wire antenna, which, just a, which is just a piece of wire that is somehow connected to your radio and strung outside. It's probably better than a TV antenna, depending on its length. And I know these, and I see if I can uh, go back one page. Where is, oh, right here. Okay, here's is the uh, antenna that I did a review of, which is just a piece of wire is all it is, and it clips onto your your telescopic antenna. I think this is about, see if it says, it's 23 feet, it's 23 feet. So that's kind of the minimum length of a long wire antenna you want. But this guy, strung outside, or even strung in your room, you know, hanging from the ceiling is going to improve your receptions reception unless you got an environment like mine where I got all these computers running causing interference. So I hope that's some helpful information. Like I say, the antenna I use is this G five R V. Um it was originally designed for amateur use for transmitting. So if you I can see if you have any corrections or comments, please leave me a comment. I'm not an expert by any means. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.